The official story is thus. Humanity fell due to a plague that swept the planet after the arrival of a race of giant aliens. So deadly was this disease that it wiped out the species save one woman, now known as the All Mother. Generations later, a society of sorts has re-emerged, one people entirely by clones of All Mother, who treat her like a goddess. Each clone has a specific societal role from which they cannot deviate. The Watcher is one of those clones, gifted with the unique ability to relive All Mother's memories. As the Watcher prepares for her duties, another clone tells her that everything they've been taught is a lie and that the Watcher is the only one with the access needed to unveil the truth. So begins the Watcher's quest to untangle the lies surrounding the nature of All Mother and the Apocalypse. 1000 X Resist is an adventure game built around the Watcher's gifts. She has the ability to shift between real and memorialized versions of locations, gleaning clues from All Mother's memories. Between memory dives, the Watcher can visit her sisters in the Orchard, the shelter that keeps them safe from alien attack. All of the other clones have their own stories, and the Watcher will have a chance to get to the bottom of their secrets as well. Overboss is a board game style title built around drafting. Two players, or just one in the score attack solitaire mode, take turns selecting from a randomly selected group of overworld tiles, each of which comes with a monster or other feature. After drafting a tile, the player must immediately place it on their own board along with any other features that came along with it. Play continues until both players have a full board, at which point they are scored to determine the winner. Scoring an overboss is based on positioning, and there are a lot of factors to track. Each overworld tile represents a classic action-adventure game biome and is worth a different number of points. Some are worth more, or on occasion fewer points, depending on what borders them. Deserts are worth few points unless you have a lot of them clustered together, at which point they become big earners. Volcanoes are worth a lot of points, but they tend to kill nearby monsters when placed. Monsters are the other way of earning points. They aren't worth anything by default. They need to be placed in an appropriate biome. Putting monsters of the same type in a row also scores points, but this isn't always easy to manage. Fortunately, the player can also draft portals to move monsters into better positions. All in all, this makes for a game with a lot of viable strategies depending on which tiles are available. As the roguelike deck builder has grown into a proper subgenre, developers have pushed the mechanics in new directions, stretching the original definition. Rogue Voltage is one of the bolder variants, taking a step away from the deck part of deck building and blending in aspects of automation and resource management. Actions in Rogue Voltage are dictated by electrical modules representing various weapons, gadgets, and power sources. The player arranges modules on a grid and then connects them. If everything is set up correctly, then the characters will automatically take the appropriate actions when their turns come up. The player's power supply is limited, and a wise player will need to make judicious use of that power, whether that means using it all every turn, or storing some of it for a bigger play. Time is also a factor in combat. The flow of time is very bent in the world of Rogue Voltage, but the player is privileged to know exactly what's going to happen and, via the art of gravitonics, manipulate that sequence. With the right modules, the player can advance or delay a character's actions for tactical benefit. Random hazards strike the field at predictable intervals, and a clever player can use gravitonics to evade those hazards or even maneuver an enemy into harm's way. The diary is the story of a missing person. The information about her is intentionally fragmentary at first. The player doesn't even know who she is, let alone where. All information is concealed in a series of diaries and notebooks, all written by different people, none of whom are fully reliable. The central narrative might be a true love story, a hidden tragedy, or a stalker's delusion, and it might end with a sinister fate or an escape. It's up to the player to put it all together. Aesthetics are a significant draw here. The books look like well-used diaries filled with mementos, photographs, business cards, flyers, even receipts. The graphics are highly stylized with a cartoon feel, but there's still enough detail for an observant player to pick out hidden hints. There's a fair bit of gameplay variety in the diary. Most of the pages contain mini-games or puzzles, and solving them gradually untangles the narrative. The player might be tasked with reconstructing a conversation in proper order, sussing new details out of an old photograph, or even winning a prize from an arcade game. As the player unlocks clues, they must figure out which ones are meaningful and put them into their proper order. 